Amen. As you see it, open your Bibles to Romans, the 15th chapter, please, the book of Romans. Amen. Praise God. So I was seeking the Lord's face about what it was he wanted to share with you today, and he gave me this to give you. I'm going to minister today on faith and patience. Praise the Lord. Romans, the 15th chapter, and we're going to read here with verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, things that were written, talk about scripture, were written for our learning. Why? That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according or by or after the example of Jesus Christ. Now there are, particularly in the New Testament, two Greek words. Most of the time it's the one I'm just about to tell you about 95% of the time. It's usually this one. Praise God. And that, that's the word of hupamane. Hupamane means cheerful endurance. It means constancy. It means continuance, praise God. And notice what it says here. It says that one of the names of God, now God has many different names, like I tell you about the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Father has different names. Lord Jesus has many different names. The Holy Spirit has a number of names. One of the names of the Father here is God of Patience. He's the God of Hupamane. He's the God of cheerful endurance, constancy, but particularly continuance regarding us. God doesn't give up on us. How many of you glad about that? Until you have taken your last breath and leave here, he will continue to try and woo you in. He'll continue to try and help you, help you make it. Praise God. Obviously, you have a vote in this. But I'm talking about his side of this. Amen. He is the God of patience, and he will not quit when you are concerned. Hallelujah. So if you think that God leave me alone, the answer is no. <laughs> He's not going to leave you alone. He's going to continue one way or the other, send somebody to you, have the word preached to you, have the song sang to you, some kind of way, shape, form, or fashion give you vision, dream, some kind of way he's going to try and reach out to you and praise God, that's because he's the God of patience. He's the God of endurance. Now that verse 4 talked about, uh, amen, the scriptures, uh, amen, that there is both patience we get out of and we get comfort of the scriptures which produces in us hope. Hope is a confident expectation and hope is very important to faith. Amen. Hebrews 11, 6 says, what? Faith is the substance, Hebrews 11, 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Amen. And so these two connect with each other. Amen. Hope is the future expectation. It's the dream, but faith is the engine that makes it come to pass. Okay. Amen. Amen. But note, the connector to both faith and hope is the scripture. It's the word of God. Amen. That's why you need the word. So many times people are trying to gut it out themselves. They're trying to make it themselves without the scripture. And there are situations you just don't have enough strength. But the strength is in the word and it's supernatural. Can I get three amens on that today? Then turn to Hebrews chapter 6, and I'll give you another Greek word for patience. Uh, amen. The New Testament is translated from the Greek, praise the Lord. Uh, amen. It's just, it's just more clarifying. That's why I like to use it a lot, because my job is to clarify scripture for you. <laughs> so, hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 6, and let's begin here, uh, amen, with verse 11. We desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full confidence or insurance of hope, praise God, unto the end. You know, let me also give you another definition for hope. 
hope also means to anticipate something with pleasure. Okay, amen. Praise God. That, because it's not appeared in, in the word in, that you be not lazy. There are a whole lot of lazy Christians. Amen. Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor, I know he's not talking about you. Right? They should say, right, that's right. He said, don't be lazy, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Now, this word, Greek word for patience, makratomia, means forbearance. It means fortitude. It means long-suffering. It's the idea of fighting through something. Okay, amen. He said, follow these kind of people who have fortitude. They can take a lick and keep on ticking. Follow those people who can be long-suffering. Because patience is about, amen, what? It's about having the ability to forbear for a maybe significant length of time. Okay, amen. Praise the Lord. And of course, we know that the word faith is pistis, the Greek word name of my Bible school is called pistis. Pistis means persuasion, moral conviction, assurance, belief, trust. All of that's in the word pistis, right? Okay, amen. So again, let's take a look at this, what he said. We desire that every one of you do show the same diligence like I said, see, this is quite different than laziness. We live now where laziness has become the order of the day. People don't want to work. They don't want to do nothing. Amen. If they do a little bit, they act like they've done a whole lot. I mean, how many of y'all can see what I'm talking about? I'm old enough to see all that. I mean, like, what? <laughs> Amen. Give me a whole lot for a little nothing. In fact, don't even ask me to do nothing. <laughs> Let me put my feet up. I'm tired. I deserve to sit here. Okay, man. He said, he said, show the same diligence to, to the full confidence of your anticipation. All the way to the end, all the way through, that you not be lazy. But followers of them through trust and confidence and belief and assurance, praise God. Marker to Mia. Those who have fortitude, those who have long so follow those people who would fight through it, praise God. Why? These are the ones who get manifestation of the promises. What promises are you talking about? Promises the word of God says. Goes on to say, for when God made promise to Abraham, he's, he's going to use him as an example. Because he could swear by no, no greater, God swore by himself. God says, I swear against myself that I'll do what I said saying, surely blessing I will bless thee. Multiplying I will multiply thee. And so after Abraham patiently endured. Now see, both Abraham and God patiently endured. They both did. Amen. God had to be patient with Abraham because it took Abraham uh, 25 years to get his act together. Right? He comes to him in chapter 12 he tells him, you know, I mean, well, what he wants him to do. Chapter 15, he lays out promises for him. By the time we get to chapter 17, man, it's been 24 years. Wow. And God says to him, nah. He says, now you walk before me and be thou perfect now. Okay. God had patience with him. And I would say God has had at least a quarter of a century patience with some of us. Amen. We ought to praise God for that. I mean, we, we ought to shout because some of us, if we was God, what would have happened? I told you three months ago. And that's the second time I told you. Three strikes you out. Bam! That would have been it, right? But God has long patience. That's why you ought to thank God every day. I thank him every day, Lord, when I was stupid, you still kept on with me. 
Hallelujah. Oh, and I thank you for it. Well, praise God. God had patience with him. And Abraham learned to patiently endure. Because he did go through some stuff. The Bible tells us in, in chapter 11, they lived in tents. Praise God. All sorts of stuff that they did. That when he left, he did some right stuff too, you know. He left his father's house. He left the land where he was. Went to live in tents. And so patience was the order of the day. For men verily swear by the greater and an oath for confirmation of them to end of all strife. He's talking about back in biblical times. Now, we, I recently I found out this is not true with men. But it used to be if a man gave his word. This is what it's talking about. Oath for confirmation. Once a man gave his word. Okay, he would die before he break it. Okay, so it's no more strife because the word's been given. Where, wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of promise, those who, those who the promises are intended for, heirs of promise, that would be us, the immutability or the unchangeableness of his purpose or counsel confirmed it by an oath. God swore by himself. Amen that by two immutable things in which it was impossible for God to lie. Those two things were the blood and the word. Hallelujah. That we might have a strong consolation. Where a consolation means comfort. We should not just have, we should, not only should we be comforted when we think about the blood, but then think about the word and what it said about the name. It said, praise God, we should have a strong comfort. Amen. We should not be upset because we got the word and we got the blood saved us and the word keeps us delivered. Come on, somebody. Who have fled for refuge, even if you've been an individual that's had situations whereby you had to flee for a time. To lay hold upon the hope set before us, which hope we have as an anchor of the suke, it's the Greek word for soul, and the soul is the mind, will, and it's the very seat of the emotions. Hope, hope keeps us grounded. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, you notice when a person loses hope, they give up. What gives us hope all the time? The word. Amen. Amen. Every day, you ought to take a little shot of hope. Amen. It's the only thing when you watch the news, hopeless. You watch or read the news on your phone or on TV, hopeless. Amen. Read the word, you find out. You read the back of the book, you constantly win. Amen. Glory to God. That will keep you grounded. See, when people, when people get depressed, what's happened to them is that they have lost hope because they stopped hearing the word. The first thing Satan wants to do to you is get you away from the church and away from the word. And if you feel bad, the place you should run to is the word in the church. Because it gives you hope again so that you can fight again. But you can't be lazy about this. Oh, I'm preaching better. I'm getting an amen. It is both secure and it is steadfast. Praise God. It's powerful. Which enter, enter into that within the veil. And the veil he's talking about, praise God, is the, is the replica of the holies of holies in heaven. Praise God. It was once upon the earth where there was the veil that separated the holy place from the most holy place. But now your faith, your hope, praise God, enters into the veil. You got a forerunner who went in for us. Who is? He is Jesus, the high priest. Forever made after the order of Melchizedek. In other words, Jesus, praise God, takes your words of hope, your actions of hope and faith and patience and brings them before the Father. Glory to God. And let me tell you what he's going to do with it. Oh, thank you, Lord. Now, let me add on some more to this. Give me three praise the Lord, somebody. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Turn to Luke, the 21st chapter, please, St. Luke. Amen. Luke 21, verse 19 says this unto us. Thank you, Jesus. In your patience, that's that word, hupamane, Praise God. Your, your cheerful endurance. Not, even, not, not just endure, endurance. This word is cheerful endurance. In other words, you're going through stuff so you decide to go, ha, ha, ha. Come on, do that with me. Ha, ha, ha. 
Some of y'all came in here with some stuff today. I know that any, any time the Lord gives me a specific, specific message like this one, I know people are going through some stuff. So right now, a little, little bit of cheerful endurance. Go ha, 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 <laughs> See, this word, is, this word patience here means cheerful endurance. You're laughing all the time. You know, I used to see, I used to watch boxing, I don't know anymore, but we used to watch boxing, man, and you see a guy, a guy hits a guy with his best shot, and the guy just, the guy he hit just starts laughing. <laughs> that dude know he in trouble now. <laughs> then you've been hit with the best thing you got in the dude smiling and laughing at you, you about to get killed right now, right? <laughs> That's what the devil sees when you laugh. <laughs> when you laugh at those circumstances, that's the picture you want to have, praise God. Well, it says that in your patience, possess your soul. Keep your mind in order. You got to learn how to not take stuff so serious, including yourself. You need to learn to laugh at life. One more time, some of y'all didn't laugh at all. But you need to do it now anyway. The older I get, the longer I have learned. I have learned stuff. I used to be so, now nah, I just can't. <laughs> yeah, no big deal. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord brought me through many years, many times. He'll bring me through this time. He'll bring me through next time. <laughs> Now, since you're in Luke, turn to Luke chapter 8. I'll turn you over there. Praise God. Amen. See, these work together, faith. Of course, 1 Corinthians 13, 13 says, Now abide of faith, hope, and love. These three, the greatest of these is love, of course, but hope's in there, in the big three. Obviously, faith is. Without, without it's not possible to please God. And if God's a God of patience, and he then told us to operate like him with it, amen, that tells us that we can always have heaven's results. See, I can have heaven's results all the time. Well, what results are there? Any sickness and disease in heaven? No. Any poverty in heaven? No. Any defeat in heaven? No, you can have heaven's result. Praise God. Now, Luke chapter 8. Thank you, Jesus. Luke chapter 8 is one of the parable of the sower. You know, you find in Matthew 13 to Mark chapter 4. Here's Luke's account of it, the parable of the sower. Amen. And he says here, verse 11, the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear the word, but then come of the devil, take away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. They on the rock are they which when they hear, receive. The word with joy. They shout about it when they hear it. But they don't have no depth in themselves. They didn't do no work. So all they heard it was just in church. They didn't go home and meditate that word this week. They didn't put it in their own heart with their mouth. They didn't act on it at all. They just let me do all the work. My job is not to do all the work. My job is to get you started for the week. I'm just your start point for the week. This is, this is your week of faith and patience. You ought to study everything in the word on faith and patience. Amen, because faith has five elements, right? Faith comes by hearing, Romans 10, 17. Faith comes by what? Receiving, James 1, 21. Receive with meekness, the engrafted words, able to save your soul. Faith comes by making a decision to believe with Praise God with the heart. Man believes unto righteousness. Faith comes by speaking. Amen. Man has what he says. And then number five, faith comes by what? James 1, Acting. Be doers of the word and not hearers only. So if you hear a word on Sunday morning, but you don't do any of the five, except you just heard and you didn't have nothing to do with that, except you just came to church. And a lot of folks don't do that no more. But they want God's result. See, what happened? They got lazy. Okay, amen? And what are you talking about? You can't be lazy, man. He said, now, you got, some, you got some, some things to do. You have a vote in this. Amen. Because Sunday morning is not enough for the drama you face all week. 
I might get you through to Wednesday, but you got to pick it up. Come on. <laughs> Woo. Well, I know what he said. Praise God. And so they received, but they have no root, which for a while believe, but in time of temptation fall away. Now, the word temptation here is the word adversity. And so in time of adversity, and that's what Satan does. You know, for years I grew up, they used to say, you know, that your trials come only to make you strong. Mm -mm. <laughs> Ain't what the Bible said. That's what tradition says. The trials come to knock you out. Satan wants to, we just read it. Time of testing, adversity. Amen. The word is sown. And you know, anytime you hear the word on Sunday, you may not get to Sunday night before you have a chance to use it. Okay, amen. Praise God. That's what the enemy does. Well, Jesus said it in Mark chapter 4. Satan came immediately to take away the word that was sown. So you should not be surprised if Monday you go to your job and sure enough, you need some long patience. See, that should tell you, oh yeah, that was the right word this week. And now I know what to do. I'm already prepared for it, Satan. Praise God. Let me ha ha ha. Is what you need to do. Use it. See, the word of God in church is not, not for Sunday. It's for Monday. <laughs> Through Saturday. That's what it's for. Okay, amen. To you, to utilize. That's what it's for. Praise God. Not just to check the box. I've been to church, so I'm good with God. Thank you for all that shouting. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. All right. Now. There is a difference between patience and faith. What's the difference? You know, patience is more about waiting, but waiting a certain way. Hallelujah. But it's about waiting. What about faith? Well, turn to James chapter 2, and I'll show you the difference between the two. I got one hallelujah out there. Thank you, the brother. I got a glory over there, another brother. The brothers are in the house this morning. Yeah, all the brothers in the house. <laughs> Love men of God. Hallelujah. James chapter 2, verse 17, touch this. Even so pisses, even so faith, if it have not, praise God, works. Praise God. Aragon is the Greek word. Aragon means if it doesn't have deeds, if it doesn't have actions, if it doesn't have doings. Praise God is dead if it's by itself. The difference between the two is that faith requires action. It always requires number five, not just waiting. Actually, usually, the patience comes after faith. You get a word from God. Amen. Now you got to act on that word. You heard it. You received it. You decided to believe it. You now speak it, which could be part of action. But many times when the Lord has something big come your way or he wants to have something big and good come your way, it's usually an action required. There's a seed you sow. There's a place you got to go. There's somebody you got to see. There's a word you got to give. It's usually always something connected to it because everything with God is usually a twofer, at least minimum which means it's not just you who gets blessed, it's also somebody else will get blessed in the process. That's usually with God, at least his intention with stuff. Now, I mean, I just found this out recently, praise God. I was just telling you a couple, a couple of weeks ago, someone entered into an agreement with me, some church folk entered into an agreement, amen, shook on it, whole nine yards, and then praise God, let, let Satan move them out from it. You see, other people have a vote. Well, see, one of the reasons why you have to have patience it's because other people have a vote. You listening to me? 
So you can do all the things you're supposed to do, and God can have you in the right place at the right time, and that person may decide to hear, obey, or not, or be moved. Now, I told you God don't quit. Okay, amen? Neither should you. See? So where do you go? You go, ha, ha, ha. Praise God. And the Lord will bring you another one. I just ain't going to tell you where, but he has. But I wait till everything is this time another way. Because other people have a vote. Okay. So you need to understand, just because this thing didn't work out, didn't mean it wasn't the will of God. Don't mean that at all. It very much mean the will of God. But Luke 6.38 says, what? Give, shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. What? You mean another man got to be involved in that? Yep. And they have a will. So they can choose to listen to God. They can choose to not listen to God. Just like you can choose to listen to God, and you can choose to not listen to God. There are no robots or automatons. Uh, amen? This is not God not operating AI with us. Okay, we are free moral agents. Amen. But so what? So patience requires us to do what? All right, Lord, I know you got, got even better one. You got a better situation. And in fact, that's what you need to be saying. Thank you for an even better situation. Praise God. Unfortunately, they missed out on the blessing that was coming their way, and they don't know they missed out on the blessing because what I was going to do was that I was going to bless them more than what they asked. But they don't know that. So they missed out. Somebody else gets blessed. Hear what I'm telling you? Amen? Amen. So tomorrow, like I said, tomorrow you may run into who knows what. Tomorrow. Okay, amen? You already know what to do. You take a notes. Do y'all just take these notes and then close them up and open the book back up next week? Okay, take your book out. Take your phone out. You know, from your notepad, whatever you did with it. Amen? Take it out that day. You, as soon as you face the situation, oh, 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 this is what I'm supposed to do here. <laughs> amen. Praise God constantly. Hallelujah. And doing that, just doing that alone will give you hope. Your faith will have something to feed. Praise God. Patience will become an anchor for the soul for you. You won't get all crazy because you lost hope. Amen. All right, let's add some more on this. Praise God. Now, turn to Romans chapter 8. Yeah, I'm a patient man. Praise God. Patience working inside me. Amen. Patience makes you calm down. Makes you calm down. I mean, you know, sometimes you need to just calm down. Huh? You need to just calm down. Stop for a minute. Hallelujah. The older I get, the slower I get. I don't mean physically either. And that's what I'm talking about. Praise God. Just calm down. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you calm down, you won't make decisions in anger. Amen. How many ever made a bad decision in anger? In fact, usually the worst decision you ever made is one in anger. You said the wrong thing. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. You did the wrong thing. Oh, why did I do that? i tell you why. You lost patience. And you lost hope. Good preaching. Woo, that man preaching. Amen. Go ahead and preach, Bishop. Praise God. I ain't getting no amen to say amen to myself. Praise the Lord. Well, now in Romans, we see here, chapter 8, verse 25, it says, but if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Okay, amen. So you don't see it. But you're going to wait for it? Why? Because your faith is working on it. See, faith is like if, if you could envision you had a tree, but you had, a, had an axe, right? 
Well, most trees, and not trees, ain't going to go down with the first blow. And that's what faith is, is, is whacking, whacking that tree. Each time you whack it, more likely the tree is about to head down. You just keep on whacking. It's depending on how big the tree is will determine how many whacks you got to use. So you got something really big, amen, it's going to take a little bit longer. Amen. What matters is that the tree falls. But if the tree's only halfway there, oh, I don't see it. It's all, only half of it's out, so. <laughs> oh, Lord, I don't understand why this ain't working. Because you put the hatchet up. You lost hope. Your faith stopped acting. Glory to God, amen. And you quit too soon. So many times the Lord had for you, and Satan can see it in the realm of the spirit, because there's a spirit realm. Satan can see, do you know when is the worst time of a situation? Just before you had a blessing. Just before manifestation. That's when the crescendo, the thing builds and builds and builds. Oh my God, it's like, you can hardly hang on, right? And Satan can see that, because if I don't do this right now, they're going to have that hundredfold return like Isaac. I got to get a famine up there. I got to make it so hard. And that's when the Lord will give you that other word. <laughs> I know I said to the Lord, said to the Lord not, too, not too long, about a week ago, I said, Lord, I don't like this particular number. And the Lord said to me, he said, well, tell me what number you're comfortable with. What he was telling me was, like, numbers won't bother me. Get it? I got it right away. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> this is, you're the one that's in charge of this thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God, and you are more than enough. You ain't just enough, you more than enough. Ooh, I'm preaching myself happy. I don't know about y'all, but oh my gosh, I am, I'm stoking myself up. Glory to God. Amen. All right, now. Genesis chapter 26, praise the Lord. Praise God. Say Psalm 118.6 for me, which says, The Lord is on my side. What can man do unto me? Say it again. The Lord is on my side. What can man do unto me? Scripture also says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, The Lord delivers him out of them all. Right? Note the term it said, many are the afflictions. In other words, certain, Satan sees you. He sees you as cancer. You are spread. If he doesn't get you focused just in, in and on yourself, uh, amen, then you will tell other people about Jesus. You will lay hands on the sick and people will recover. You'll be, you'll walk in love to somebody else and they'll be drawn God's way. Hallelujah. And if he doesn't get you just focusing on yourself, you'll be a cancer that spreads, which is what you're supposed to be. Hallelujah. So he got to turn you inward, man. So as the word says, many are the afflictions of the right. He'll come at you with that and lose. Come back again with that and lose. Amen. Come back again with that and lose. Okay. Amen. Eventually leave. He'll flee. He'll come back later. Try again. Try again. Hallelujah. You do what you're supposed to do. Leave. All the time the Lord's telling you, don't you know I'm good? I never leave you. I never forsake you. Thank you. Now in Genesis 26, we read it. Here's that famine, praise the Lord. Word of the Lord came unto Isaac. And know what the word of the Lord was made no sense. He said, don't go into Egypt. Well, Egypt is where the food is. He said, stay here in this famine land. Sometimes the instructions the Lord will give you will make your head go tilt. Oh, I've been here many a day. The Lord, Lord will say, do something. You say, do what? <laughs> I remember when I was a rookie preacher, man, and somebody did me really, really, really wrong. I won't get into the story. Most of y'all know the story. Okay, amen. But the instructions from the Lord to me was, he said, I want you to go over to where they are. I want you to put your arm around their neck and tell them you love them and bless them with a financial gift. 
Amen. It came out my mouth and my head even registered. I said, Lord, you're going too far. I mean, that made no sense to me to do that. What you mean? I mean, I could be rewarding what, rewarding his bad behavior. No. The Lord was trying to do something with me so that he could bless me regardless to what they did. Well, I did, he did, and we got blessed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, and I'm so glad because the Lord told me if I had not done what he said, he could not have brought the miracle. See, so sometimes you can't be lazy. There'll be an instruction to be here. It may require, you may have to get out and do some looking. Sometimes we want everything just to come to us. Y'all looking at me like I'm crazy or something. We want everything to come to us. Huh? But sometimes you got to go to it. You let the Lord lead and guide you. He's trying to get you out the seat. You're like, well, if it's you, it should come to me. Said who? Are you listening to me? I'm talking to somebody about the Holy Ghost today. Now listen to the Lord. He may send you. I ask the Lord, where you, where you want me to go? Glory to God. You want to bring it to me or you want me to go to it? What do you want? In other words, every situation is different. Well, the last time, this is what happened. Well, this ain't the last time. This is a different situation. Another time, and the Lord's got a better miracle than the last time. Did you hear what I said? I said he's got a better miracle than the last time. But you have to grow enough that he can do more with you. Well, I've been saved for 25 years. That's right. You've been saved for 25 years. What else? Anything else besides just being saved? And mercy, Jesus. Turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. I'm coming down the home stretch in a minute. Praise God. The Lord wants to challenge you to operate in faith and patience. Be patient. Amen. I've learned this lesson. The older I get, the slower I get. Let's just wait. Let's say what God said. Let's do whatever else he said to do. Let's listen. Keep our spirit open. See if he gives us an instruction. It may be something you wouldn't have done. Amen. What the Lord was getting me out of. Hallelujah. Second Corinthians chapter 6. Notice what he said here in verse 4. But in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God in much patience, in affliction. Is this word, upamane, cheerful endurance. Praise God. In necessities, in distresses. Well, afflictions, of course, is when uh, folks are coming at you. Necessities is when you don't seem to have enough. Distresses is when it's really bad. In stripes or imprisonments and torments and labors and watching and fastings. By pureness of knowledge, amen, you have knowledge of the word. By long suffering, yet by kindness, by the Holy Ghost and love that doesn't change. By the word of truth, by the power of God. By the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left. Amen. What did, what did he say here? That word approving here means that you are an individual, praise God, who is commended as a minister of God. See, how you know whether or not you're a real, real minister of God is how you act when patience is required. How you act when afflictions and necessities come. Anybody can shout and dance and preach and teach when everything's going great. It's when everything seems to hit the fan. Come on. Come on, somebody. There's a problem. Now we find out if you really saved or not, really, you really called or not. Amen. Lots of people want to stand up here behind this desk. If you knew what I dealt with, you might change your mind. Are you listening to me? Praise God. This is the sugar part. This is the, this is the easy part, the preaching part. I got lots of preachers. They all want to preach. Amen. 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 
And the ones I give, my, I just talked to one the other day, the ones I give pastoral responsibilities to, praise the Lord, they come back to me and say, now I know what you were talking about. <laughs> now I get it. Oh, Lord, help me. <laughs> praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Turn to Titus chapter 2. I'm coming down the home stretch. Praise God. Say, I'm a man of faith or woman of faith. And I'm a woman or man of patience. Praise God. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Titus chapter 2 verse 2 says in verse 1 let me read verse 1 but speak thou the things which become sound doctrine that the aged men means mature men do I have any mature men in here yeah. the aged men be sober or sound grave temperate sound in your faith sound in your love and sound in patience. Amen. This refers to about what maturity is a man. See, ladies, you're looking for single ladies, whatever you got, what you got right now. If you're married, so. I'm going to leave this alone, all right? Before I put foot in mouth, all right? But, but you're looking for one, praise God, that is temperate. It's not over the line on everything. Amen. Amen. Can't walk in faith and love, and it's just not quickly move. Amen. That's why you shouldn't be getting married. It's just a, you're just too young to get married. Amen. Because marriage requires maturity. Because you can't have what you want all the time. You can't have it your way all the time. You may not be able to get your way even half the time. Oh, Lord, have mercy. You're going to have to give. You're going to have to compromise. You're going to have to accept, learn how to accept criticism, not just be able to level criticism. You have to be able to accept criticism and not be offended. Huh? You got to be able to be able to be told who you are and thank you for that. Ouch. And then look at it. Maybe there might be some truth in what they are saying. You ain't ready for all that. You ain't ready for marriage. I don't care what your body says. You ain't ready for marriage. Because once you get married, if you don't fix this, you ain't going to get nothing with your body anyway. Maybe I get an amen on this side. Ooh, I'm preaching, Lord have mercy. See, maturity, you're looking for some mature folk. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Temperate. Man, you don't want to marry some woman. All she do is spend all money. I asked her wife the other day. I said, you know, because her car is four years old. I said, I'll buy you a new car next year. Now, her car ain't gotten hardly any miles on it. Low mileage. I said, I'll buy anything you want next year. I said, so? So what you want me to buy? I'll buy anything you want. She said, I'll just keep what I got. I said, I'm in love. <laughs> All the brothers said. That was a louder amen in that last one, brother. <laughs> Learn how to have a balance. Amen. Not that all women spend money. They don't. There's some men who spend money like crazy. But y'all you know what I'm talking about. Amen. Maturity, praise God. Spiritual maturity is this. Turn to Hebrews 11, 12th chapter, please. Amen. Got a few more. Can y'all hang on this one a little bit longer? Amen. Anybody getting anything out of this? If the Holy Ghost is hitting you in the mouth, praise God. Thank the Lord for the beating. Hallelujah. Say thank you, Lord. Ouch. Thank you. Mm. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses. Talking about those who've gone on, who are now in heaven. Praise God. They are a cloud of witnesses. Let us, while we are here on earth, 
lay aside every weight. The word weight means hindrance. Now, a hindrance can be things. Hindrance can be people, not your spouse. Don't lay your spouse aside. Don't you walk out of here, the Lord told me. The bishop said in the Hebrew chapter 12, lay you aside. I'm laying You lying now. But that word does mean hindrance because there are things that get in our way. And there are things that are keeping you from spending more time with the word, keeping you from spending more time growing in God, keeping you from doing the things you need from God and, and maybe some people, and you may need have to make some decisions. Life is a series of decisions and it's about priorities. Now what's supposed to be priority number one is God Almighty. He said, have no other God before me. Okay, amen. Why my, my husband won't let me go to church? Well, praise God, let me tell you. A husband is not your Lord. Amen. My wife don't want me to go to church. She ain't your Lord either. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. amen. No. No. You got to stand before God. Now, that doesn't mean you don't operate in wisdom. Use some love. A lot of stuff, I would say, in here, this space. But at the end of the day, you can't let nobody come between you and God. At the end of the day. At the end of the day. Are you listening to me? At the end of the day. That's where it's got to be. They don't want to go to church. You get up and go. You pray. You be the sweetest thing they ever seen when you came back home. Make them so glad you went to church. Every time you come, come from church, amen, you so good to them, they'd be like, go to church. <laughs> and then finally, you know, I think I'll come to church with you. Amen? But what you're not supposed to do, you come from church and now you judgmental Sally. Or judgmental John. Come on, somebody. Look, you need to get this in order. The Bible said this about this. You sure ain't living for God, you know. No wonder they don't want nothing to do with God. You represent God, and that's what they see. No wonder. Ooh. The Lord will heal your stripes today. He'll heal them. Some folk got some repenting to do when you get home. I said, the Lord gave me this message. <laughs> know what he said. Lay aside the sin which so easily beset us. You see, the, the thing that, that just, this the one is hard for you. I mean, this one easily gets to you. Uh, amen. And let us run, lay it aside. Let us run with hupamane. Cheerful endurance, constancy, continuance. The race that is set before us, how do we do it? Looking unto Jesus. Not under them, not under it, but looking unto Jesus, who is the finisher of our faith. Praise God. Look to him. Look to the word of God. Hebrews chapter 10, amen. My clock says I got a minute left, so hurry up. Let's read here verse 36. Praise God. For you have need of patience, praise God, after you have done the will of God, that you might receive the promise. That's what I was talking about. You have, you got the word from God, you heard it, received it, believed it, spoke it, and you acted on it. Amen. And maybe you've not seen the result yet. That doesn't mean this is over. This is not over. Just because you don't see something yet. Are you listening to me? Now you've done the will of God. What, what do I need? Oop, I'm an A. I need consistency. I need to say, stay the same. Rejoice that it's already done. Not going to get done. Faith is now. Rejoice is so. Praise God. I got the word of God on it. I'm assuming that's what you did. I got the word of God on it. It's so. Praise God. I want to thank you for it. They're saying this. Yeah, but the word said. Yeah, but your body's saying this. Yeah, but the word said. 
Yeah, my eyes say, yeah, but the word said. Praise God. And all I got to say about it is, ha, ha, ha. James chapter 1. Praise God. Mm, anybody getting anything out of this today? James chapter 1, notice what he tells, tells him in verse 2. Okay, my clock is out. Wrap it up. My brethren, count it all joy. Ha, ha, ha. Note the word all. Count all of it. Talking about your attitude. He's writing to people who are fleeing persecution. He said, count it all joy. The word joy to hear means calm delight. Stay calm. Amen. Delight in the fight. When you know you win, we can have fun in the middle of this fight. Because we know at the end of the day, I'm going to knock you out. Right? Count it all joy when you fall. Might not even be your fault. But when you fall in the diver's temptation and test of trials, knowing this, the trying of your faith work of work, patient endurance. That's not automatic. It will if you count it all joy. See, your response to this thing, your response to this situation, your response to these people, your response to this employer, your response to these co-workers is not I quit. Not a mature Christian. I quit. They talking to me. They treat me right. I'm done. You need to grow up. That's life. Tell your neighbor, life is not fair. Because our, our memories are convenient. So we only remember the stuff we did that was good. That's all we remember. We don't remember what we did that wasn't good. Hello, somebody. Amen. Come on. Come on. Amen. Time to grow up. Don't pack up your bag and um. Might as well put a diaper on you with some safety pins. Let's go. Grow up. Amen. Amen. But know what patience to bring you, verse 4. Let patience have a perfecting work. Why? It'll make you perfect, that word's mature, entire, lacking nothing. You stay here long enough, you'll find that the goodness of God will work the full maturity. And at the end of the day, if you didn't abandon in times of testing, if you didn't abandon, you'll find out he is good all. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 6, I'll just tell you where it is because time is out. But Second Peter chapter 1, verse 6 says, add to your faith. How I many have got any faith people in here? He said, add to your faith patience. The understood subject of that sentence is you do it. You add this to your arsenal. Praise God. Hallelujah. Now that I'm telling you to have patience, you got to stay in the word every day. You just got to do it. You got to put the word in your mouth. Praise God. Hallelujah. But your patience will grow and grow and grow and grow and grow until you come to the place. Amen. People say about you, what? Well, aren't you worried? I mean, aren't you, aren't you concerned? I mean, nothing seems to bother you. Amen. Now, when that's what they say about you, mm, you've arrived. Now, Matthew 18, 1, I'm out of time because I was going to spend some about 15, 20 minutes in Matthew 18. But Matthew chapter 18, verse 1 is about patience with people. Maybe next week I'll pick it up. But Matthew 18, 1, amen, talked about there and I is your assignment for the week. Go home and read Matthew 18. And over in Matthew 18, it talks about how someone had patience with someone else. And allowed that individual to, okay, all right, let them get their act together. But when, praise God, somebody else was in that situation, they didn't exhibit the same patience to someone else that was exhibited to them. 
And it said, God said, take that person and put them in prison. Stand with me, please. Thank you, Jesus. Let's lift our hands and thank God for the word this morning. Come on, thank God for the word. He'll heal your stripes. He'll heal your bruised ego. Hallelujah. He'll heal you. Praise God. Receive the word. Amen. Receive it. Ask the Lord to help you actualize it this week. Lord, help me to act in this. Help me to walk in this. Let me receive that fruit of being perfect, entire, and wanting nothing. Thank you for it, Lord. Now give me a round of ha-ha-ha's. Some of y'all, I don't see none of your teeth. You don't have no teeth? I should see your teeth. Come on, let's get some high high here. <laughs> so remind yourself this week. Amen. Remind yourself this week. Things come down your way. If nothing else, if you don't remember nothing else in this message, remember this. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Years ago, my music director's name was Jeff Davis. Outstanding man of God. Love that brother, still love that brother. He's still alive, he's just in heaven. Hello, somebody. One day I'm gonna see him again, and he's gonna be leading the choir in heaven. Hello, somebody. But the Lord gave Jeff a song. When the devil comes your way, remember the promise day by day. You're filled with the spirit. It's okay. Laugh at the devil. Laugh. Amen. And then I would say behind the song, I'd tell them, remember what it said in the book of Revelations. Praise God. The devil said he read the back of the book and he won. <laughs> the devil said, God cannot heal you. said his power was stronger than God's. <laughs> this is what God was telling you this week. Amen. Every head bow, please. Every eyes closed in prayer. Heads about, please. No one walking or talking or moving except the people so assigned. I want you to know, praise the Lord, you need Jesus. Everything that we talked about in the Word today is from the Word. You need the Word Himself, the living Word, Jesus, the Son of God. You need Him in your life. Now, I didn't say, praise God, that you're not a nice person. You can be a nice person and not have Jesus. You can be a nice person, praise God. Amen, but still not go to heaven. The Bible doesn't say you, you are saved by works. It's not that your good works outweigh your bad works. Nope. That would make it a wage. The Bible says that we receive the gift of salvation. You can't earn it. You can just receive it. And I want to pray with you today for the gift of salvation, including my online audience today, wherever you might be in the world. Then there might be some people who may say, well, you know, I, I am born again, but I, 
I got impatient. I got away from hope. I got away from faith. I got out of fellowship with God, and I crashed and burned. The Bible says a good man may fall seven times, but he gets back up again. Get up. God will help you up. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 9, if we would homologio, if we would acknowledge our sin to him, God's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Praise God. Come on back to him. I told you, he's not going to stop with you because he loves you so much. Then there might be some here who may say, you know, I need to be filled with the Holy Ghost. According to Acts 2, 4, they began to speak with tongues. The Spirit gave them utterance. If you don't understand speaking with tongues, I wrote a book. It's in our bookstore. Get it. It's called Speaking in Tongues. Who, me? It's the title of my book. Get it. Read it. Then when you understand it, you'll understand how important it is to be filled with the Spirit, being able to pray in other tongues. And then finally, there might be someone that says, I'm looking for a church where the Word of God will be taught in a way I can understand it. Because this is not entertainment hour. This is teaching hour. This is Praise God, inspiration hour. This is learning and understanding hour. And if you're looking for a church that will give you that, Word of Faith is the right church for you. We honor you today, and we invite you to become part of us, whether you're online, we have online membership around the world, or whether or not you're right here locally, praise God in Jesus' name. But if you're here locally, when I call for the others, you can come up and take care of that right today. So, while here's about as a clothed in prayer, if you're not born again or... You're not sure about that, but you want to be sure. Or you're out of fellowship with God, but you want to come back to him. Or you want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, speaking with tongues. Or, praise God, you want to join up with us here at Word of Faith. If you're here in the auditorium, of course, online can do that online. Ma'am and sir, if you desire my prayer today, while heads are bowed, eyes are closed in prayer, I want you to lift your hand wherever you are right now. And you say, I need that prayer. I need to get in on that prayer. That's me. You're talking to me. Lift your hand up high where I can see it. Please see a hand over there. God bless you. I see another hand over there. Come on. Don't be ashamed. Praise God. I did this. I got saved over 50 years this way. Praise God. Another hand over there. Anybody else says, that's me. Praise God. Glory to God. Another hand over there. God bless you. Praise God. Another person over there. God bless you. Anybody else? Another hand over there. Yeah, I know, I know you're thinking about it. This is the biggest decision you're going to ever make in your life. Do you want to say no to God? Really? Or do you want to accept his invitation and say yes? One more time, lift your hand every person that desires prayer or any of those things. Another hand over there. God bless you. Anybody else? That's me. Praise the Lord. Everybody, let me put your hands down. Listen carefully. If you lifted your hand for prayer, I want to do what I said. I want to pray with and for you, along with you, and lead you to the Lord this way. God, amen. Ma'am or sir, I'm going to ask you to do something courageous. I'm going to ask you to gather up your belongings unless you have someone you trust to leave them with. And then, ma'am or sir, if you lifted your hand or you didn't lift it, but you know you should, amen. Step out near this aisle then. Come on up and let me pray for you right now. Come on, let's pray. Come. In the name of Jesus. Praise God. That was such a powerful service. God truly knows what we need and when we need it. And I know that everyone out there was blessed by the ministry of that word. Now, I want to say congratulations to everyone that made a decision about Jesus Christ. This is the best decision of your life. And right now on the screen, there's important information that we ask you to follow. Fill it out in its entirety and we'll send you a gift that will help you with the next step. Thanks everybody for joining and we'll see you at the next service.